to Christmas Eve at Grace Lutheran Church in Westminster, Maryland. By any measure, it's been a tough year, and this is certainly a Christmas Eve service unlike any other. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. I also want to thank everyone who worked so hard and demonstrated so much creativity in making this worship service happen. Amidst all of our challenges and physical separation, our hope is that this service is a source of great joy, comfort, and inspiration for you, all of your family and friends, wherever you gather. Tonight we celebrate and we find meaning and derive hope from how God shows up in our world, often in unexpected places, during times of trouble, and with very humble beginnings. That was most certainly true when Jesus was born in a manger in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. And it is equally true here and now, when Christ is with us in our hearts and in our homes as we worship together. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. 
Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Long time ago in Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible say, There is born child Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Hark now hear the angels sing, a new king born today. Man will live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. Trumpet sound and the angels sing, listen to what they say. Man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. The shepherds watch their flocks by night, then see a bright new shining star. And he hear a choir sing, the music seem to come from my darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, 
and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, 
they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The word of the Lord. Pastor Kevin and I want to welcome you to our home and thank you for inviting us into your home on this Christmas Eve. While we are apart, we remain one body in Christ. We give thanks for each of you, whether you are a member of Grace or whether you're a friend who's been invited to join in this service today. We're grateful that we can be a part of your Christmas celebration. The first stanza of the Christmas Carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, has been going through my mind a lot lately. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. In the 21st century here in the United States, most Christians associate Christmas with going to church, where we join large crowds of people to enjoy extensive decorations, beautifully prepared music, and the emotional experience of sharing candlelight, which gradually replaces the use of electric lights. In addition to worship, you may have your own traditions. No doubt they involve a lot of food and a lot of people. Well, this year, we are being challenged to find meaning in Christmas that goes beyond our usual traditions. For most of us, in addition to missing the joy of Christmas Eve worship at church, we find our holiday quieter and more isolated. I believe that I've been revisiting those words from a little town of Bethlehem because it so vividly points out that the first Christmas was unrelated to our traditions of decorations, performances, and pageantry. Yet we probably have more in common with those people than we might think. I question whether Bethlehem was all that quiet on the first Christmas night. Many people had traveled there in response to the emperor's call for a census. The inn was full, and there was if there was such a thing as bars back then, well, I think they were full too, full of conversation and banter about the trips people had had coming and about the taxes that were going to be a result of the census. But then back behind the inn, whether in a stable as we picture it or a cave as the people of the Holy Lands describe it, something powerful was going on. A young couple who had traveled far were about to have a baby. There was present with that, no doubt, all of the noise, messiness, and stress of human birth. Although scripture gives us no details about what happened with that young family bet between the time that they were sent out behind the inn to the arrival of the shepherds. I like to think that a woman, perhaps the innkeeper's wife or a local midwife, followed the young couple into the shelter to help in birthing their firstborn child. When you think of it that way, it's all so ordinary. Meanwhile, there were those shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their sheep by night. 
just another ordinary night. No wonder they were afraid. When light, song, and angels broke through the night sky, nobody could have predicted that the night was going to change so radically. Once they found the young family, they were bubbling over with the news that they had been told by the angels. As they returned to their fields, back to their ordinary lives, they were still glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. Yes, they went back to the fields to tend the same old sheep, but their lives would be forever marked by what they had seen and heard that night. And so it is for us. We are in ordinary circumstances tonight. I look around my room right now, and except for a tree being in the middle of the room and a few decorations, this room is so familiar to me. It looks pretty much the same, whether it's in January or June. Yet this annual celebration of Christmas has a big impact on me and my life, whether it is January or June. The tree and the decorations go away, but the impact of Christmas remains all year long. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. It isn't Bethlehem, but the Christ child in whom our hopes and fears come together. Where else can we bring our fears, name them, entrust them to God, and then go away with hope? Luke tells us that Mary treasured what she heard from the shepherds and pondered all these things in her heart. When you follow through on the Greek word, which our Bible translates as pondered, you find that in the Greek it's a compound word that brings together two meanings. One is to throw things together, and the other is to consider and compare. You see, Mary wasn't just thinking, oh, isn't this nice? Look at all the attention my little boy is getting but rather she was reflecting on what these things mean, digging deep to see the power of God at work. In a time like this, you and I need to ponder. We need to think and pray deeply, watching for God's unexpected activity in the world just as God came in the form of a baby, so too God continues to show up when and where we least expect. Reverend Guy Irwin, the president of United Lutheran Seminary, wrote, We go to the manger this year to look, as the shepherds and the magi did, for the future, for our future, mirrored in the face of a baby. In the ordinary places of our lives, Jesus makes a difference, bringing us hope and direction. When we feel lost, this little face promises us direction. When we are discouraged, the Christ child promises hope for a new day. In the dark streets of Bethlehem, there was a glorious light, even if some of the people passed by without even seeing it. Tonight, in our homes and in our hearts, the light of God's love burns bright, calling us forward away from our fears, planting hope for a brighter future into our homes and our lives. The Christ child comes once again. 
we know that he won't stay a baby for long. Soon, oh so soon, our journey will turn toward Lent and Easter. The child came to bring an everlasting light into the world, and the darkness cannot overcome it. My prayers are with you this Christmas, wherever you are. May you know the joy of the shepherds. May you ponder these things as Mary did. And together, may we be the body of Christ in the world. Amen. A sun shall be given, a virgin will conceive, a human may be marrying undiminished deity. Separate us
welcomes our prayers as loving parents listen eagerly to the voices of their children. On this blessed night, we gather our hearts and minds from many places into one prayer. Let us pray for teachers, parents, guardians, and all who guide and nourish children around the world. Eternal God, you choose to come into the world as a newborn infant. We give you thanks for your journey on this earth. We give thanks for Mary and Joseph who care tenderly for you. Bless all teachers, guardians, and parents who care tenderly for their children today. Give them wisdom and patience for teaching in the midst of COVID-19. Provide for children who are without loving adults to care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for government leaders who serve our communities, for military personnel who safeguard our freedom, and for all those who work for peace among the nations. God of the universe, you have placed us into communities where we depend on each other. Forgive us when we break relationships and allow personal greed to separate us from one another. This night we give thanks for the leaders who seek to care for the good of all with wise and measured decisions. Protect the military personnel of our country, especially those who are away from family on this Christmas Eve. Provide wise leaders who seek to build peace throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are homeless, for those who struggle to make ends meet, and all who seek justice in this sinful world. Gracious Lord, you and your family knew what it was like to be without a home and to depend upon the goodwill of others. We pray for your blessing to be upon all who are struggling with financial instability during the pandemic. We raise before you the needs of our neighbors who have nowhere to call home. We pray for those whose lives that are threatened every day because of unjust systems in our world. Inspire us to reach out to those who are in need. Give us your Holy Spirit so that we will listen carefully to the needs of others and find new and creative ways to change systematic injustice and to bring aid to all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for first responders, medical personnel, law enforcement officers, and all who risk their lives for the well-being of others. Compassionate God, you broke into the night sky with good news that the Savior has come into our midst. Our community's first responders and medical personnel and law enforcement officers are often called upon to respond to the needs of others in the midst of darkness. COVID-19 has placed a great strain on all these important workers. May your light break into the weariness and despair felt by so many who are caring for others. We pray for an end to this pandemic and safety and strength for all who have grown weary. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, that we may continue to proclaim the gospel of Jesus by eagerly, eagerly serving the whole creation including those who are the most vulnerable among us. Holy God, we give you thanks for the coming of your Son into this troubled world. Grant that your Holy Spirit will work through your church to embody your message of love, justice, and peace. We pray for those who are facing hardships, especially the orphaned, widowed, and refugees. We pray for those who are alone in the world, those who are sick, and those who are dying. Use us, your people, to break the darkness with your eternal light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, hear our prayers, spoken aloud and in the silence of our hearts. May we rest in peace on this holy night, knowing that you are Lord of all. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. They lived in a land of shadows, and now the light is shining on them. From the very beginning, the Word was with God, the Word was the source of light, and this brought light to humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. Seeing a vision of heaven, John wrote, The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads. There shall be no more night, and they will not need lamps or sunlight, because the Lord God will be their light, 
and they will rule as kings forever and ever. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. A city built on a hillside cannot be hid. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a bowl. Instead, it is put on a lampstand where it gives light for everyone in the house. Let your light so shine before people that everyone will see the good things that you do and will praise your heavenly Father. God Almighty, send you his light and truth to keep you all the days of your life. The hand of God protect you. His holy angels accompany you. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit cause his grace to be mighty upon you. Amen. 